How do I start this thing? Have you plugged the bloody USB in? Yeah, it's in. Nah, man, that's the wrong port. Oh, wait, it's flashing now. Is it? Re- oh, wait, it's recording. Well, let's start this thing, Paul. Hello, everyone. I'm Amelia. Hi, I'm Sam. Welcome to Ask the Duo podcast, a podcast where we get deep into those late night, unfiltered conversations. We'll be discussing all things lifestyle, relationship, mindset, and more. All right, let's get to it. Hello, welcome we are back. back. Well, I was actually listening to this podcast to from Rise and Conquer by Georgie Stevenson, and she was interviewing this lady called Jordana Le- Levine. I think that's how you say Levin? her last name. Levin Levine. And they were talking about, just sections of it was talking about communication styles and communicating, which got me thinking, because sometimes I do feel like if I was to talk to someone like depending on who I'm talking to, I don't always get my point across. I find that yes, that can be true because obviously everyone interprets things differently. Yeah. Right. So. So this is what got me thinking: Are we good communicators? And that's a that's actually a good question, right? Are we? So do you think you are? Like most of the time, or some of the time? Probably ninety percent of the time. Ninety percent. I think ninety percent of the time I am. And then obviously there is that 10% that people may not perceive what I'm saying correctly. Yeah. So why do you think or why do you believe that you are 90% of the time a good communicator? It's situational based, like different scenarios. And obviously depending on who you're talking to, yeah. th- that situation may essentially dictate how someone can understand. Yeah, I know, but what makes you feel like you're 90% good at communicating? I feel like I'm pretty straight. I wouldn't say straight to the point, but uh, I get my point across straight away and, yeah, I, and that, I try to. Yeah, that's pretty true. For me, it's probably not as high as 90%, but I think especially during work I am a good communicator like I know what I need I know what to get my point across and I can change between communication styles but I feel like when it's within say someone that I'm more close with like a friend or something I do struggle a little bit more because there's a bit more emotion attached to it but with you I think communication is quite straightforward it's just with friends I think I struggle a little bit and it's just because of that emotional attachment. Like either I feel bad, I don't want to say the wrong thing or I don't want to step on the wrong toes or something like that. And that's when I struggle. Right. So you'd say that you adjust your, I guess, your style of communication. Yeah. yeah. So I think as a person, a personality, I am very adaptable and I chop and change and fill the room a lot. So I change according to that which we'll touch on a little bit later. But what I wanted to bring up was I was actually researching a bit on communication styles and communication types. And there's this person who actually does the study of behavior of humans. And she wrote a book called Conversational Intelligence. And her name is Judith Glazer. And she actually says that nine out of 10 people miss the mark in communicating miss the mark as in they're not able to yeah the conversations miss the mark is because either the person doesn't understand or they just couldn't get their message across which i found amusing because nine Mm. out of ten dude that's pretty high yeah well that's what i was about to say is that's that's a pretty solid yeah and if you're saying you're 90 percent good so you're that one person (laughs) well that's just i don't know like that's me my feeling is yeah uh, yeah so and the reason why she says this is because our style and our pattern is perceived differently between different people so which is kind of what we're saying true very very true gets in the way of how other person perceives what you're trying to say and touching on that that does definitely make sense because Everyone's different in the way they communicate and perceive. When when you actually read like, oh, nine out of ten people miss the mark. Yeah. It makes you go, holy crap, like Yeah, like what are people listening to and what are they receiving? Well how are they yeah, yeah. how are they thinking when someone says something to them? Yeah. I think that's the interesting part. Yeah, I find that really interesting. And then 
So I don't know if it's the same study from Judith, but there's another study that says your behavior traits influence different types of communication styles, which I think is really true because if you think about it, everyone's personality is different. And because of that, that will influence how you would like to receive or give out communication. Yeah, which definitely makes sense because your personality has an influence as to how you prefer things or how you basically can comprehend communication Mm -hmm. or words. Yeah. So in this conversation, we'll go through different types of communication styles, which we'll go through next, but there's also different communication types, which I feel like it kind of gets in depth, but it gets you thinking in terms of what you use and how you like to receive communication styles as well. Actually really interesting because I had a look at what those style types are and I'll just list out what they are first, but the first four is passive, you're aggressive, you're passive aggressive, and you've got your assertive. And when you actually look at those four categories, it actually makes sense as to how people can adapt those four and apply that in their own personal form of communication. And I'll just define what those four are, right? So obviously starting with passive, so that's a go with a flow type, right? Can be swayed. Then you've got your aggressive, Aggressive is your opposite of that. So that's just someone that's fucking in your face, intimidating. (laughs) I won't say gung-ho, but they're very strong with expressing their feelings, right? Passive-aggressive, those are the guys who (laughs) are are like, fine, whatever. Facial expressions don't match the words that they use at times. I'm sure everyone would know what a passive-aggressive is. Yeah. Not ideal, but yeah. Well, words don't align with their actions, right? So... Then you've got your last one, which is assertive. So this is more the balance of all, Mm -hmm. right? So encourages open, honest dialogue while still considering the needs of others. Yeah. So this one I wanted to bring in as well. So this is actually what got me thinking. When Georgie Stevenson was doing her podcast with Jordana, this is what she was saying. She said, ideally, everyone should get to an or use assertive style of communicating. And when we usually think of assertive, you're like, well, I don't want to be assertive. Like you think of that as either being intrusive or being too rude, but she explains it and saying that there's actually a negative connotation to it and it shouldn't be like that. And assertive isn't aggressive, it's two different things. So I think what a general society is thinking is that when you're being assertive, you're also being aggressive, but it's not the same thing. And that's actually a a good point because when you hear assertive, even for me, I'm just like, well, am I asserting my dominance? Is that what it defines it as? Or, you know what I mean? Like Like I said before at the start, it's a balance of the two, but it seems like the assertive is a good balance in some way or form. Yeah. So she explains assertive as it's just a person who simply knows what they want and they'll express that but at the same time they will understand that other people will have their opinions and they are allowed to voice that it's just that i want this and this is where i want it to get to but i'm open to opinions or i would like to hear your thoughts something like that whereas aggressive is like no we need to do this yeah I that's only actually true want this. so that's what she explains it as yeah that's a good point because you're sort of in the balance of respect but getting your point out kind of thing yeah so so i think for me i i was thinking about it because i used to always think i'd be a passive person communicator which it does happen but i definitely think i am assertive most cases but as i think i was explaining to you off the mics that i can fluctuate between or switch between assertive and passive especially when I feel a bit more intimidated or someone is like higher ranks than me and I don't want to I don't want to be disrespectful or I don't want to step on their toes or make them feel like I'm trying to take over the job or something like that as an example then I'd be a bit more passive but I think that's something I need to learn is to still remain assertive and respectful and not fall into that passive category Yeah, and that's actually a good point because even for me, I feel like, yes, I'm probably predominantly assertive. And I think you're really good at that. Like you definitely are assertive, but a good kind, like not in an aggressive manner. Like you know how to express what you want and get your point across and know how to listen to other people. 
Yeah, and I was saying that I am predominantly aggressive. Uh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> assertive. No, I'm predominantly assertive, but I feel that there are times where I'm, I wouldn't say passive, but potentially passive aggressive. A bit of that pa- oh, passive aggressive. Yeah. yeah, because like there's different situations. Like for an example, work, right? If, if you're having a chat with your boss, you obviously you, there are times where you, you can get your point out respectfully, and, but there's also times where depending on the boss, you got to be passive. You got to go with the flow and listen, understand where they're coming from, mm. because that your boss could be very particular with results or that sort of stuff. So you coming off as, "Hey, this is my opinion," may offend them in some way because everyone's different. So there are situations or times where I have come off in a passive way, and then other situations where you have to be passive aggressive outside of work, probably more in that friendship situation like joking around yeah there are moments where you have to be a little passive aggressive yeah but i bounce around the three yeah so again it really depends on the situation yeah situational base 100 percent. yeah but what i wanted to dig deeper into is actually the communication types which i find really really interesting so i don't know if this is the original study of it but the one that we were looking at is this person called Mark Murphy came up with four different communication types. And it's what you do to apply to help you communicate yourself to others or vice versa, like how they can communicate to you, like get a message across to get their work or the brief across to you. And the four types is analytical, intuitive, functional, and personal. So analytical is very, as you can kind of hear from the name, it's facts and data driven. So you would use data to explain or communicate what you're feeling or how you're thinking. So very numbers based, facts based, that kind of style. And then intuitive is actually the opposite of analytical. So you're very in touch with feeling, you're feeling based, you'll, you use your intuition, right? And usually you read the room, you prefer visuals and they like to see the bigger picture. So like in a bigger goal, this is what we're, we're wanting to do, or this is what's going to happen rather than looking at the small individual things. And then functional, which is a lot of process. They like to know the little steps, the little details, the milestones, that's how they want to be communicated with and it's another facts based one so functional and analytical are uh, very facts and then another feeling one is the personal so emotional base so you want to be able to connect or relate to the person that you're talking to and that's actually pretty cool when you define the communication type because when you define the four types it actually makes sense that yeah. there are so many different people who I wouldn't say uh, have a strong suit on one particular type. Yeah. It seems like everyone's a, a variation of maybe two or three. Or I actually feel like there are some certain people that I've met throughout my life that has one yeah. certain communication type, but I do also see people who are very adaptable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah which yeah. is what I feel. But yeah, like I wanted to re- relate this back to the initial question, like are we good communicators? Yep. I just don't think that anyone's good or bad or at communicating. I think it's a lack of understanding of these different communication styles and adapting themselves with these types and styles so that they can get their message across. Oh, yeah, 100%. I think you have to be open to adapt to different kinds of people, right? Yeah, well, it's not open. It's having the understanding that there are different people. So if someone is very certain that they're a very analytical person but they don't want to change their style then the person who might be more feelings based they won't ever get what you're trying to say if you're going to be so facts based and they're like okay so what's that got to do with you know this person who is feeling a certain way like they they need feelings or some sort of connection rather than just data yeah, and but that's what I mean by being open though. It's understanding that there are other kinds of people out there who talk and receive communication differently. Mm. And it's about adapting, like you said, right? Yeah. So I feel for me, I am a combination of all four. Yep. So 
if I apply my communication type to, let's say, work, so as a broker or even a, a banker, I'm all for because that's all required as part of the role. So, for an example, personal, you're thinking with emotions. You communicate with emotions. It's all about building that feeling, that relationship, and that translates to the other three. So analytical and functional, like you said, it's all about data. It's all about painting the picture, which when you're talking to a client, you need to paint the picture. What's A, what's Z, and how do we get to that point? And intuitive, yes, it is in theory opposite to analytical, but it's about defining the visuals. So if a, if a customer or a client comes to you and says, hey, my end goal is to buy a home or to get into a home. Well, yes, you've painted that picture. Now, how do we, how do we actually apply everything to get to that point? All four has a, a, a pretty significant effect when it comes to my role in that situation. Yeah. Now, in my previous role, which was less face-to-face with customer and client base, I would only have three of those, which is the functional, the analytical, and the intuitive. But why do you think you only have three as opposed to it's pre- Well, it's predominantly more th- the three, right? So let's say 95% of it is the three and 5% is the personal because it's more team-based. It's more, okay, this is the process. This is the set, uh, I guess, direction as to where we need to go. We just need to trust the process and follow it. But wouldn't you, if you're like a team leader or team base, wouldn't you want to apply some of the personal communications because you can connect or relate to a team member or someone that's working under you? Yeah, true. But I feel that in this in this working environment, it probably wasn't as... The reason. priority was the priority, different. Yeah, the priority wasn't different, but... It was good because everyone was on a equal level in understanding of how things worked. So the feelings and the communication of that personal side wasn't as required because everyone was very... So like everyone was already on the same level playing field because you know that everyone understands you on that same level emotionally. Correct. Yeah, when, when I was looking at this communication type as well, once I started digging into it and was thinking about my communication type, I actually realized that the way that I receive is also quite different from the way that I give. And I guess it's influenced mostly because I'm thinking of work sense, but it could be true in outside of work too. So the two that I was thinking that I like to receive is the main one is functional. And the functional is because I like to see the end objective, the reason why you want to do something or like what the problem, like the bigger problem is, but also like what the in-between steps are. But the reason why I am a mixture of that and intuitive is because even though there's a goal, I don't really care about the, like I want little baby steps or like directions, but I don't really care too much about how much we stick to that as long as we can solve the problem or get to the end goal, the in-between can fluctuate or like you can mix and match or you can adapt to whatever happens. Right. Yeah. So I think I'm a mixture of functional and intuitive when it comes to like work on someone receiving, like when someone's giving me what they're trying to communicate, their message, I like a bit of that. So, and intuitive also because I, I like to read the room as well and then I'll change how I want to communicate after that. So then how do you communicate to in a working environment? Not just working environment, but just like when I communicate and give out, I like to be more analytical because I feel like most people, this is just from like the past many years of just talking and all that. They like, a lot of people prefer to have the data backed up along with being personal. So you understand where they're at, their emotions, connecting with them, but then also giving the factual base to back up what you're talking about. Mm. And that helps them understand. But again, I would mix in a bit of intuitive. So I'll read the room. If I know that this person is very analytical, I'll go straight to the point. Like you can tell that they don't want to wait, have their time wasted, they're in a hurry, they'll be like, okay, so this is what we need, this is where we're at, this is what we'll do. That's yeah. it. But if I know that someone's more maybe 
introverted shy or something like that then I'll warm up to them a little bit talk to them be like get to know them and then be like hey I know this is where your situation is let's do this and we'll get you to this yep and that's exactly like myself when it when it comes to outside of work environment I'm very much adaptable and it's all about reading the room understanding who the characters are and then that's when you adapt and change your communication style What I found interesting, though, to me, is, like, learning about myself is that even though I like to do that intuitive side where I read the room and adapt, when I receive things, they were saying, like, the functional and the analytical people, they are more cold. Like, they just want straight to the point. That's me. I don't need the, hey, how are you going? How's your day? What do you do on the weekend? It's just like, hey, I need help with this. I'll be like, okay, that's it. Savage. (laughs) <laughs> no, I'm saying for me receiving yeah. that, yeah, I yeah. don't need that stuff. I just need if you have a problem, just tell me. You don't need to be like, "Hey, how are you?" Blah blah blah. And that's no like got ten minutes wasted, and then like you kind of feel awkward if you're like you have to wait a few minutes before you ask like that. I need this, that kind of stuff. Like I don't really care if you want to ask me a question. Just ask me a question. I don't need that emotional side of things like mm. the small talk. So I just find it interesting. Like my receiving is completely, well, I wouldn't say completely different, but different to my giving out to other people. Yeah. I actually did a quiz, which is from Mark Murphy. Yeah. Which led on to basically, I guess, trying to understand what your communication style is, right? But that also led on to communication styles by industry, which I thought this was really, really interesting. Okay. So So defining it by like your work industry, whether you're in finance, whether you're in IT, whether you're in creative industry, and it actually defines majority of the people in terms of what their communication styles should be in that particular industry. Okay, so let's go through yours. So in finance, so here I have... 30% 30% is mostly analytical communicators, 30% which is intuitive communicators, and then you've got the last two, so functional, which is 18%, and personal, which is about 22%. Do you think that's true, though? Like, do you think it actually depicts what people are in like banking and finance? Well, obviously, banking and finance is such a broad industry, right? So in a scale things, analytical and intuitive is quite right Mm. in the fact of that industry Mm -hmm. but I also feel that the personal communicator is probably a little shy because that is required when you're doing face-to-face so you think it needs like I think it needs might be higher I think that percentage should be higher yeah because yeah you're you're doing face-to-face seeing clients and that sort of stuff I think that is a, a, another strong yeah especially if you're like a teller or something i think yeah 100 more of that yeah mm. and i looked at your industry so, so marketing marketing pr social media that. so here it says analytical communicator as 19 percent. then it's got intuitive communicator as 20 percent. functional communicator as 21 sorry 23 percent and the biggest one, which is personal communicator at 37%. I can see why personal is the highest because definitely when you're working in marketing, design, like anything where it's service-based where you have to serve as a client, you have to understand and be personal to understand them yeah. to be able to design or make a marketing strategy for them and their business. That's why it's high. But I think... You definitely need analytical and all the it's, – it's a big mix of all of them because mm. the reason why as creatives I think I'm a big advocate of any creative industry to know business because the clients that you're talking to are all business people. So you need to know business. So they are number-based. They need to see data. They need to know where you can get them to. And it's not about like you know making sales or whatever – an example, there's a business who's been doing, like running a business for the last 10 years and doing great, but they don't have social media. This is not the real data, but I'll, like what I would pitch is like 70, 70% of people use social media to do their uh, research on buying a product, like seeing how many people like it or what their products are, like just researching behind the business. 
and this business might be missing out because they don't have a social media account. So using that data and be like 70% of the audience, like the same audience that you have as opposed to your competitors are using the social media to buy a product or making a purchase decision, you're missing out and you could use this as an opportunity to grow your audience or your consumers even more and build a trust with them through social media. So yeah. that's how I would use ana- like analytical data to communicate something across. Which makes sense though because if someone's coming to you as a business, their only understanding is, well, hey, my business is not doing well because of this or whatever yeah. it is, right? So you have to obviously come in with that personal communication type style right, to understand them and build that rapport on yeah. a personal level. And sometimes they'd be like, I just want to see sales numbers grow. Yeah, but you correct. have to think the bigger picture, which is the intuitive part or the functional part, because you need to tell them it's not about just growing your sales. It's like, why aren't you growing in sales? Like, did you not, like, have you not really been in touch with your audience or like not let them know mm. who you are they don't know your brand they don't know the backstory about your business like the bigger picture rather than being like sell 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 and put my products online make a discount so that people are inclined to buy like discounting isn't always a way to make someone buy yeah, something 100 percent, and it and it all makes sense i feel like majority of the industries all four types are used yeah i think it's definitely in, good to use all four in all shapes and forms right whether it's 10, 15, 20, 30, 100 percent, all of it has to be used in some way or form. Yeah. And it's the same thing like for the finance industry, like from a I, like for an example, like the CEO of my previous business is very data driven based, right? That's all he cares about. It's what is the projected figures? Okay, let's base on that. The hard situation about that is is the people who are working in the trenches who actually deals with the stuff see a totally different result, right? So it's kind of like, okay, well, this is your true results as opposed to projected results. And it's about communicating and being realistic, but respectful in a way where they don't get shit at you. So that ties back into being respectful, being assertive in terms of showing your communication, but also adapting and understanding other people's communication styles. And maybe even that might open them to understand that they need to change or adapt their communication yeah. styles too it's like a it's a two-way street right yeah so it all correlates in some way and form but it's really interesting to see how the the styles and the types have some form of relationship yeah so it's really really good to, yeah. to see in that way so and i think it's just also interesting how that relates to your personality or someone's personality which we didn't really dig into but i think that might be interesting to even talk about that next time but how that correlates with each other i think that's really interesting too but with these we'll leave the sources that we've mentioned in the description below but even the test that you took i think that'd be interesting if you wanted to try that out definitely give it a go because there's i think around 13 questions but it actually makes you think deep as to how you would respond or even just perceive her i think it brings awareness to how you communicate which it definitely brought awareness to me because i didn't know i had different ways of receiving as opposed to giving yeah let us know what communication style or communication type you are and what you prefer as a communication are you adaptable or are you on type kind of person yeah and Shoot us a DM if there's any questions or topics that you guys would like us to look into. And follow us on all our socials, please, in the link below. (laughs) All right. Closing out. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. If you have reached to the end, we really appreciate you for tuning in. And if you like what you hear, please share it with your friends or family and subscribe to our podcast on whatever platform you are listening to. Make sure you share any topics you'd like us to cover or questions you might have to our Instagram. Slide it into our DMs. Bigger, bigger. You can also stay in the loop of all the behind the scenes and the release of our new episodes there too. Our Instagram is Ask the Duo Podcast. That's A S K T H E D U O P O D C A S T. Man, feels like I'm in a spelling bee competition right now. (laughs) 
All right, that's it for now, and we'll see you back here for our next episode. Bye. See ya.